Hey everyone, this is going to be a complete overview and review for Synology Photos. So I'm going to leave timestamps below because this is probably going to be one of my longest videos, but we're going to look at three key areas. First, we're going to take a look at how Synology Photos work. So this is going to be a complete overview. We're going to go through most of the functionality. I'm going to try to hit everything, but obviously there's probably going to be a few things I miss. But we're going to take a look at that first. Next, we're going to take a look at my personal review of it. So we're going to look at what I think, what I like, what I don't like. And then finally, we're going to go through some of my final thoughts. So I have a link in the description. I have a written article for this as well if you're interested in just reading through it as opposed to watching this. So I'll leave that in the description. But let's take a look now at how Synology Photos works. So depending on how your data was migrated over, meaning if you were using Synology Moments or you were using PhotoStation and you had photos inside of it, your data would have automatically migrated over with uh, the upgrade to DSM-7. So you will have pictures here. If you are using Synology Photos and you're brand new to it, you're not going to have any pictures. So when you first log into it, you're going to be able to upload your pictures by basically dragging and dropping them into your personal space, which we'll get to in a second, or into your shared space. Now the Synology Photos application uses Synology's home service. So what that means is every single user on your NAS has their own home folder and the photos that you store inside of that home folder will automatically basically migrate over into Synology Photos. So the first question you might be asking yourself is if you have a photo library and you're interested in migrating everything over to Synology Photos, what is the best way of doing it? And in my opinion, the best way of doing it is navigating to your individual home folder or the photo folder inside of DSM and basically just pasting all of your photos there. Whatever folder structure you're currently using, Synology Photos will automatically go through and crawl all of that data in. So the key distinction is if you paste any of your photos inside of your home directory, it will be inside of your personal space. And if you paste anything into your photo directory, it will be in the shared space. So the key distinction between the shared space and the personal space is the personal space is used for your individual files, meaning that if you upload photos and videos to it, you are the only user that when you log in will be able to see those photos unless you share them with somebody else. The shared space, everybody will have access to the shared space depending on the permissions that the administrator sets. So we're going to take a look at the shared space in a second here. But that's the key distinction. The personal space is for your personal photos. The shared space is for photos that you want to share with other users. So as you're navigating through either the personal space or the shared space, you'll see on the right hand side that you can toggle between folder view and timeline view. Now, personally, I like timeline view. It just is an easy way for me to navigate throughout the years. Generally, I have an idea of what I'm looking for. So I'm able to use that to quickly bounce back and forth to find out whatever photos I like. But if you are somebody that has a fully developed folder structure and you like to navigate through it that way, you can select the folder view and you can navigate through it on the left hand side. Another helpful feature is you can use the quick filter toggle on the right hand side and that's basically going to allow you to uh, search through different years or you know photos and videos. If you have people specified you'll see it there as well and the same is true of geolocations. So that's just an easy way that you can look through all of your photos and hopefully narrow it down to exactly what you're looking for. Now, the incredibly important thing to understand here is that the metadata that exists with these photos and videos is the way that Synology Photos is going to categorize these media files. So if you go through and you upload a bunch of files that don't have any metadata values, they're going to upload with today's date. However, if you go through and you're uploading photos from say the past 10 years and all of the metadata exists inside of that media file, it should categorize everything properly. So you should be able to run through the timeline view and all of the dates should be correct. Now your personal space, you have permission to. You are the only user that has permission to it unless you share any of these individual files out. But the shared space is handled differently. So inside of the shared space, you have to have permission just to access it. So you can go through and an administrator has to actually grant that user account permission. And there's two different types of permission. There is entry and management. Entry just allows you to see all the photos and videos that exist. And management allows you to go through and add, update, delete everything. Now to take it one step further, you can go through and you can create folders inside of the shared space. 
and you can give different users permission to specific folders inside of the shared space. There's also a permission that allows guests to view photos and videos in the root folder. So the root folder is that photo folder that we talked about a little earlier. So if you have images that are just in that root directory, if the user does not have that permission, they're not going to be able to see them. If you break everything up by folder, you're going to be able to grant permission to specific folders. If you run through and you decide that you just don't want to use the shared space at all, you can completely disable it. Now heading over to the album section, you can create new albums and you can either add photos by uploading them from your computer, selecting them from your personal space or the shared space. There are four albums that will exist by default. There is the recently added, videos, tags, and places. Now inside of the Synology photo settings, an administrator can go through and enable the people library. And this will basically just pick up faces from your photos and it will try and categorize them based on who is in the image. At that point, you can go through and you can give different names to different people and you'll be able to search for those people at a later time. They will also come up in the filter section we looked at a little while ago and you'll always be able to come to this people library, select their face and you'll see all of the images that they exist in. Now after an album is created, you can go through and you can share that album with other users on your NAS or if your NAS is set up for it, users outside of your local network. If you don't want to share an entire album, you can run through and share an individual photo or video as well. Now the share dialog allows you to set a few different parameters. So the share settings are public or private. Basically you can set it so that anyone that has the link has access to view the files, download the files, or you can make it private so that only invitees can actually access those files. There is also link protection where you can specify a password to access the file or you can set an expiration date so that the link will expire on a specific date. The invitee list will contain users that exist on your local NAS. If you head over to the sharing section, you'll see everything that you shared with other users and everything that was shared with you. So this is just an easy way you can go through and see exactly what's been shared. Finally, there are mobile applications that allow you to do most of what the web version allows you to do on iOS and Android. They also have a feature that allows you to um, automatically back up new photos. So anytime a new photo is taken, it will automatically back up to your NAS. You don't really have to think about it. You'll just know that your photos are being backed up. Other than that, you can go through and view, share, or download any of your photos or videos. You can also go through and clear up space on your local device. So what that does is it will go through and it will delete the local copy that exists on your mobile phone and it will keep the version that exists on your NAS. So I'll talk about the mobile applications a little more in my review, but overall, everything kind of that you would like is there. You can view everything, share everything, and automatically back up everything. That is, to me, some of the most important features. Just keep in mind that if you are outside of your local network, you're gonna have to have a way to connect back to your NAS. So my suggested approach for that is via VPN, so I'll leave a pop-up for that now in case you wanna implement that. So that is it for the overview. I'm hoping that that helped explain how Synology Photos works. I know that for the most part, a lot of that stuff is just straightforward, but I wanted to at least talk through it the way that I understood it. So now we're gonna take a look at my personal Synology Photos review. These are some of the things that I like, some of the things that I dislike, and I'll be fully transparent early on that I've been a Google Photos user for five plus years now. So I've been a big fan of it. I'm gonna be comparing Synology Photos to that a lot because although I've used Synology Moments in the past, which we will get to in a little bit, I've been using Google Photos since release and I'm a big fan of it. I'll be fully transparent in saying that. So I'm gonna be comparing a lot of what Synology Photos does in comparison to Google Photos. So as far as the photo management goes, I think that for the most part, as long as your metadata is correct and Synology crawls in that data properly, everything's gonna display the way that you'd expect it to. So I like the timeline view. It's exactly the same way on Google Photos. I think that logically that makes the most sense when you're navigating through you know, tons and tons of photos. Uh, but Synology also gives you the folder view. So if you have your folder view set up properly, you can navigate through it that way as well. Other than a few performance hiccups, I didn't really notice a major difference between navigating through my photos using Google Photos or using Synology Photos. Now for the personal space, I actually like the personal space a lot. 
Um, I don't mind that it is in the user's home folder. I've read online that some users would like to move that. I think that for the majority of people, it makes the most sense to have it in the home folder, especially if you're using Synology Drive. So I can understand why users would wanna change it, but I think that when you're trying to build something for the majority of users, you have to do what would make sense for the majority of people. And I think that storing these photos inside of the user's home directory makes sense. Now, while I like the personal space, I will be fully transparent that the shared space, I, I don't fully understand the shared space. Um, and I think that the reason I don't get it is because I see a lot of similarities between the shared space and shared albums. So the shared space to me exists because they needed a way to migrate everything over from PhotoStation to Synology Photos when the upgrade occurred from DSM-6 to DSM-7. And if you think about the functionality in Synology PhotoStation, you were able to give different users permission to different albums. Well, in Synology Photos, after all that data was migrated over, those users will have the same permissions they had in Synology's PhotoStation. And those permissions are on the folder level, which is treated inside of the shared space kind of like an album. The problem is that albums can be shared as well. So you can go through as a user, create an album, add a bunch of photos to it, and you can share that album with other users on your NAS. So I don't want to make it sound like it's all bad because the truth is that there are ways to use both albums and the shared space. And at the end of the day, the shared space can be completely disabled if you don't want to use it at all. So at that point, it's even harder to say that they're too close in functionality because it can be disabled completely. So from my perspective, the way that I think that you can use both the shared space and albums and shared albums is that the shared space should be used for photos and albums that are shared amongst a common group of people where you want everybody inside of the shared space to have permission to those specific photos or albums. At that point, you can go through and you can create albums on a personal level and then you can share those albums with other users on your NAS that are not part of that common group. So that is what logically makes the most sense to me as far as using the shared space and shared albums at the same time. But like I said earlier, if you hate the shared space, you can just disable it. So the next thing that we're gonna take a look at is facial recognition. So the facial recognition, at least from my experience in Synology Photos, has been incredibly strong. And what I mean by that is it picks up a ton of different faces. So there are pictures where in my personal library I had um, people basically that were in the background that I would have never expected Synology Photos to pick up their face, it did. And I basically had a bunch of people that honestly I didn't even know who they were because if you're looking at it from like a sporting event perspective, if you take a photo and say the stands, there could be tons and tons of people around you and those people, each one of them, Synology Photos might pick up their face. So that is, you know, as far as the facial recognition goes and what it's picking up, I found it to be a little strong. Google Photos did a better job of trying to understand what was in focus and only displaying those users. The other thing was that for the majority of people, there were, you know, at least say 10 to 15 different faces for the same person. So that could be due to age, that could be due to uh, you know, a different pose, sunglasses, basically various different things. But Synology Photos had broken them up. Now it's easy to fix them. You can go through and you can merge the faces, but there is an initial cleanup that you have to do. If you did that initial cleanup in Synology Moments, then you shouldn't have to do that in Synology Photos. Everything should have migrated over. But if you didn't do that in Synology Moments, everything is gonna be there and you're gonna have to go through and clean it up as best as you can. And keep in mind that as you move forward, you're probably going to have to clean that up as well because it might not categorize everything perfectly. So overall, it does pick up faces. It does pick up faces well. It picks up a few too many faces in my opinion, but it's better to pick up more faces than less, I guess. So you can go through and you can clean it up and overall it will function properly. So moving on to search. The search inside of Synology Photos should really be limited to tags, people, and places. And what I mean by that is you can go through like we just looked at and tag people's faces. You can go through and look at different places and look at different tags. You can specify places and tags inside of each photo and that will exist in the metadata of that photo. But you should really keep your searches to that. 
Um, if you try and start searching context inside of photos, Synology Photos is just not going to return any results. So to give you an example, in my personal library, I have a ton of pictures of cats and dogs and cars and, you know, basic stuff. We're not talking very elaborate things here. And Synology Photos did not pick up any of them. That is where Google Photos completely excels. So if you go through Google Photos and you search for car, it's going to pull up a lot of photos of cars. It's going to pull up pictures of cars, exteriors, interiors. It could pick up an engine. There are so many different ways that it goes through and it categorizes those photos. So overall, Synology cannot compete with that. And I want to be totally transparent that they probably never will. But I will say that Synology removed the subjects feature that existed inside of Synology Moments. And that subjects feature basically allowed you to go through and search for specific things like beach or ocean. And when you would go through and you would search for those things, it would actually return results. If you run the exact same search with the exact same set of photos inside of Synology Moments and inside of Synology Photos, Synology Moments will return results that Synology Photos does not. So at this point, Synology Moments search capability is actually significantly better than Synology Photos is. So in summary, keep it to people, places, or tags, and you should return the results you're expecting. If you start trying to search context, you're probably just not going to get the right results. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the mobile applications, and they are both fairly bare bones in the sense that they allow you to view, download, and delete photos that exist on your NAS. You can share those photos, and you can set up automatic backup. So anytime you take a new picture, it will automatically back up to your NAS. Now, I've had basically deferring um, experiences with the iOS and the Android app. So the Android application, as far as backups goes, it works great. It runs in the background. It runs significantly better than Synology Moments did for me. As soon as I take a picture, it goes through, and within, say, 20 to 30 seconds, it's automatically backing it up to my NAS. The iPhone application is the opposite. I cannot get it to back up to my NAS without actually opening the application, which kind of defeats the purpose because you have to run through and you have to make sure that you open the application. So as far as backups goes, from my experience, the Android app is superior. Moving on to the actual media consumption, so viewing photos and viewing videos, the iPhone is superior in that regard. So the first thing is that neither the iPhone or the Android application have a built-in um, video player. So what it's doing is it's trying to play the application on whatever default application plays media files on your phone. So from my experiences, the iPhone application runs quicker, it streams the media faster, and it appears like it favors playing local media as opposed to playing media directly from your NAS. So what I mean by that is if you launch the Android application and you view a photo and that photo exists on your local device, it's going to display it from your local device. However, if you run through and play a video, it will try and stream it no matter what. It favors playing media from the NAS rather than from the local device. So even if it exists, it's not going to play it. That's a hindrance because if you're not connected to your NAS and you go into Synology Photos and you try and play a media file, and you know it exists on the local device, it's not going to play because it's still trying to stream it from the actual NAS device. So they're different in the sense that Synology Photos runs better when you're actually using the application on an iOS device, and it functions better when you're not using the application on Android, if that makes sense. Because once you take a picture, it'll go based on those settings and it will automatically back up your media. Other than that, the applications are relatively bare bones for a lot of people. That's all that they need. But as far as Google Photos goes, you can go through, you can edit photos, crop them, you know, change certain things about them. It is a better experience, but for a lot of people, this is really all that they want to do. So that wraps up the review portion, and we're just going to quickly talk through some of my final thoughts. So to me, Synology Photos is a pretty solid application. Um, and it can replace other applications like Google Photos if you're currently using them. The caveat there is that if you're a power user or the more of a power user that you are as far as photos go, you're probably going to like Synology Photos less because as you get into the searching context of photos or other what we'll call non-standard 
practices inside of that application. Synology Photos just doesn't look like it was designed for that, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you're looking at it. So if you just wanna back up photos as soon as they're taken and you want a central location to store them and you don't wanna pay any cloud storage fees, then Synology Photos is a great option for a lot of people. But if you're somebody that wants a lot of those AI features that Google Photos offers, things like memories and you know automatically categorizing photos and automatically enhancing photos, Synology Photos, it just doesn't have any of that built into it. And truthfully, I don't think Synology actually wanted to build that into it. So I don't think that they're really missing their mark because I think that they're doing exactly what they set out to do. Um, with that said, there are some things that you know are a little frustrating. It is frustrating that they removed the subjects album from Synology Photos because that did allow you to search some of that context in photos. So at this point, the search is a little weak. The mobile applications are a little bare bones. And for the actual application, there's really not much to it. It's just a place to store your photos and videos and share them if you'd like. But with that said, for a lot of people, that's exactly what they want. And at that point, you have the benefit of not having to pay any cloud storage fees to Google or whatever other provider you're using. And you don't have to worry about your privacy. You're managing all of your photos yourself. So I think that Synology Photos is a relatively straightforward, basic application. It does exactly what they intended for it to do. That doesn't mean that I don't want them to continue building it out. I have a few areas for improvement in the written article. So there are definitely areas that they can make Synology Photos better for everybody. It can be an overall better experience. But I think that for the majority of people, it generally does what they want it to do. The mobile applications could use some work, especially the iOS application. If they can get it to back up in the background, that will be a huge benefit to it. If they wanted to build out a media player, that would help as well. But that's minor compared to something like the backups. So those are my final thoughts. That is my overview, review, and final thoughts of Synology Photos. I'm hopeful that this helped you guys out. I know it wasn't everything, but I'm hopeful that it hit on most points. I apologize for the long video, but there was really no other way to do this. Uh, I considered breaking it up, but it just didn't make sense. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and tell me what you think below. If you want to see more overviews and reviews like this, I am happy to do them. So thanks a lot for watching, guys.